All right, I'm just gonna do a quick tutorial on uh, how to set up Sparrow Wallet with an air-gapped cold card. Uh, this should be a pretty short video, so let's see. So the first thing you're gonna need is you know, a computer running Sparrow, so your desktop or your laptop can run it. And once you have that downloaded, um, it's gonna, you know, when you open it up, I think it's gonna have like a, you know, some screen that has like a little welcome message, but this is the main screen you're gonna see after you close out that message. And from here, you're gonna click on file and you're gonna click on import wallet. All right. And we're gonna be working with a cold card. So you can see, you know, the details here of kind of, you know, what you have to do. So import file created by using, you know, these steps, right? And so you can do this on your cold card. Make sure you're running, you know, this this 3.1.3 firmware or later for this to work. So now let's go over to our cold card. And we'll just do this on the screen up here. Alrighty, so once you got your cold card here, first thing you're gonna want to put in your SD card into your cold card. So do that. All right, and then, uh, you know, just like those instructions said, you're gonna go to the bottom here to advanced. Go to export wallet. And then go down to generic JSON. All right, press check. And then give it the account number zero check so now that's going to save it on the SD card you see that little light when that light flashes that means it's finished so you can just press check here and you can X out back to the main menu all right now you can pop the SD card out okay put down your full card and now you're gonna put this into you know whatever SD card reader you have for your laptop or computer Pop that in. Back to the computer. Now here you click import file. You go to your SD card. And this is the, the file that you just generated. All right. You press open here. You can choose your script type. So, you know, there's three or four different uh, options here. Uh, I just keep it at negative segwit. That's what most people use nowadays. So I just keep it at the default and press import. So I'm going to name this, you know, tutorial wallet and create that wallet. This is where you would enter a password. For this one, I'm not gonna have a password. And this is the screen you get, um, you know, you get shown uh, right away. So on this screen, um, yeah, this is the transaction tab. So whenever you receive any, any uh, payments or send any payments, you'll see them listed out here. You have the date that they're sent, the label of it, whatever value it is, and then, you know, your, your balance as of, that transaction so you know if you're sending it'll show you know your balance minus whatever you sent or if you're receiving you know it'll show uh, your balance plus whatever you just received um, okay and you know obviously you can't send anything because we don't have any uh, UTXOs belonging to this wallet yet but once you've got some UTXOs that you've received into this wallet you'll be able to send them from here uh, this is where you receive, so, you know, <laughs> you want to send some Bitcoin to your wallet, you click on this receive tab, um, and you can, uh, you know, either scan this QR code or copy this uh, address, and uh, you'll be able to receive there. Um, I recommend always labeling your transactions. So, you know, I'll, what I'll do is, I'm going to make another tutorial in a bit, um, you know, talking a little bit about UTXO management. But what I'm probably gonna do is send 
this new wallet, um, you know, a few different UTXOs for that tutorial. Um, and when I send those, you know, I'll label them here uh, so that they're labeled once they're received. This tab here is going to show you, um, you know, the addresses belonging to your wallet. I think it shows like the next, you know, I don't know, a couple of dozen addresses that you can receive to. Um, once you start receiving to these addresses, then it'll always show you, you know, the next handful of, of addresses. And, you know, you're most likely never going to run out of addresses. I think there's, you know, whatever, a, a ton of them, right? Um, so, you know, don't worry that you can only see this many. There will be more once you actually start receiving to these first few. And then these are your change addresses. So uh, whenever you send Bitcoin, if you aren't sending the exact amount that is associated with the inputs going into the transaction, and I'll talk a little bit about this, you know, I'll talk more about this with the UTXO management tutorial, which I'll, I'll make next. Um, but yeah, if you're not spending the exact amount in the inputs, then you're going to receive some Bitcoin back to what's called a change address. Um, and that's basically just going to, you know, be a, a, a slightly different um, type of address than, you know, just your regular old receive addresses. This next tab is uh, your, uh, the UTXOs tab. So this is, this is the, the main one that we're going to be looking at for the next tutorial. But once you have, once you've actually received some UTXOs, you know, they're all going to be listed out here in this tab. So for UTXO management, and, you know, this is a super, super helpful tab. Um, you get to see, you know, all your UTXOs, the, the different sizes of them. You can, you know, sort them by the labels you've created, uh, sort them by, you know, the date that you've received them during. Um, so yeah, this is like a super useful uh, a tab for UTXO management. And the last tab here is settings. So uh, this will just tell you, you know, some important information about, uh, you know, your wallet that you've just made, you know, so it'll tell you, you know, the script type and uh, policy type and whatnot. Um, you know, this is either signal signature or multi-sig script type, you know, again, between these four options, native SigWit is kind of the, the one that's used most often nowadays. So that's a default. Um, you know, these, these things you don't really know, need to know like what, what they are. Um, but, but I don't know. It's like, if you were to ever have a different derivation path, then, you know, you'd want to take note of that, but this is the default. So you don't really need to worry about it too much. Um, and then if you ever want to like, uh, have a watch only wallet, let's say you want to have, um, you want to be able to see whenever you receive Bitcoin or you want to be able to generate receive addresses um, on your, let's say you want to do that on your mobile device. Uh, you could use this XPUB to make a watch only wallet, which will be able to create receive addresses and be able to you know, notify you every time you receive a payment. Um, but it won't be able to you know, sign a transaction, right? It'll only have visibility into what you're receiving. Um, but it won't be able to send anything. So that's what the XPUB is used for. Um, yeah, and that's, you know, that's really it. So like, you know, one, so again, once you have this whole, this whole thing set up, now you can start to receive Bitcoin here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and fill this up with a few different UTXOs, and then I'm going to make a UTXO management tutorial. So check out that one next.